Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to your timeless starseed transmission. If you are tuning into this video, you have recently gone through a period of heart healing and you are ready to, the phrase I'm getting is embody love. You had to go through that period of heart he healing in order to make room, make space in yourself in order to embody love. And the divine feminine is really calling us right now to step up and embody the frequencies of love, warmth, and compassion as much as we can. This is part of part of why we're here, part of our mission. I'm just saying that this is from the divine feminine in general because I'm really feeling this coming in from all angles. I was trying to pin down where it was coming from, but I was like, okay, it's coming from Gaia. It's coming from the divine mother. It's coming from Mary Magdalene, the Palladians, uh, Agartha even. It's just kind of coming at me from all angles. Um, as I was actually sitting on, I was sitting on top of this hill with my dog in the sun and I could just feel this coming at me. I was like, okay, so this is just, this is a kind of a feminine moment and I feel like all of the divine feminine energy is coming together with this one message that we need to be kind of like a tuning fork, holding holding love and warmth and light and compassion for for everybody right now so that they can, everybody else can start to tune into it and join us. And I'm actually, I've been guided to include a, a guided meditation at the end of this. That's why this reading is going to be a little bit shorter, actually, and I've already dealt the cards. I just feel this, <laughs> this message coming in really, really specifically. So I did, I did uh, draw some cards here. These are two brand new decks. It's the Dreams of Gaia Tarot and the Beyond Lemuria Oracle. And I see now why these cards came to me, these decks. They came just for this reading. So uh, let's take a look. The first card up was Mount Shasta, which was really cool. Um, for those of you who don't know, Mount Shasta, I mean, I know most Americans probably know. Um, for everybody else, Mount Shasta is in California. It's uh, a mountain all by itself. And it is considered a, a really sacred place. There's lots of UFO sightings and grid lines and all kinds of spiritual work is done there. And it is said that when Lemuria fell, the a lot of the Lemurians set up shop in Mount Shasta. For me, this card, I mean, yes, it represents Mount Shasta, but it also represents all the other locations like it. And honestly, I feel like there is kind of much ado made about specific sacred sites when really there are so many more, so many more that people never talk about um, and ones that aren't aren't built up in kind of built up in culture. So this Mount Shasta card is representing to me all sacred sites and a sacred site can be a little clearing in the woods that only you know about <laughs> and that can be just as powerful for you. So and to me this card is calling us to get in touch with our sacred sites. Like for me, for example, it could be that little hill I was sitting on with my dog, which is not considered a sacred site by anybody but me. But, you know, I sat there and I always receive downloads when I'm sitting there in the sunshine. Um, so reminding us that if we get grounded into the earth in points on the earth that are sacred to us, um, that can just facilitate the ease of transfer of information with the earth and with the cosmos. And it really sets us up to, to travel to other other realms, you know, astrally or energetically and to just be more connected. So there's a reminder there because once you go to your sacred site, stepping through, stepping through. I was dreaming of Agartha this morning. I had uh, about a year or maybe two, it's hard to remember, a couple years ago, I was having dreams of going down into... Like, like I was going for a hike. I'm really into hiking, so hiking dreams are pretty normal. But I was having dreams of going down and going along this weird path that only I would go down. And then I would find this big, massive, like 10 meter wide log and it was hollow. And I'd go into the, into the, into the log and I'd go down into this tunnel underground where there was waterfalls and rivers and it was all lit up like giant glowing mushrooms and these giant firms and everything was so bright and vibrant and sparkly and it just felt like it was an incredible magical place but the deeper I went down to the into this underground cavern this this tunnel 
Uh, I felt like so compelled to keep going, but I also felt like the energy was just getting so much. I was getting overwhelmed and I was starting to get terrified, even though it was like a beautiful, magical place. And the dream, I could never like figure it out, like because it felt so real and felt there was just something about it. Um, this is before my awakening. It was just, yeah, so it must have been like two years ago. It was really weird. And somehow this morning I was having a different dream of coming down out of a skyscraper because there was a fire and I was going down the fire escape out of the skyscraper. And for some reason that reminded me of those dreams I had before. And I re and in the dream, it was kind of a lucid dream. In the dream, I realized that those dreams about going down into that tunnel, underground tunnel, I had been traveling down into the earth, into the inner earth civilizations of Agartha. So I had been stepping through, like these cards popped up. I was like, oh my God, right? Um, I went to, you know, a sacred place. I stepped through, I traveled through the tunnel, I traveled through the portal. Um, so, you know, go to your sacred places, sacred places, and you don't even need to go there physically, you can go there in your mind, um, just in your dreams even. Go to your vortex points and step through, step through. We're being called to go, <laughs> go somewhere new, um, or really to remember the places we've been before. It's almost like going somewhere old. But I think we do this um, not by not by leaving Earth, not by being too up in our crown chakra, right? We want to do this by being grounded with Mother Earth. This is all about, right now, we're in a period of grounding with Mother Earth and grounding into our bodies and really living our human experiences, getting, getting good with our sacred sites on the Earth, remembering that, you know, we came to Earth to, to be on Earth. We didn't come to Earth to leave Earth. We came to Earth to be on Earth. So I feel like, there's a message here about going down, going inwards, going, getting connected with the earth in order to get connected to higher realms. It's like going down in order to go up, right? The importance of, you know, we don't need to go up in a spaceship or, or astrally travel up through our crown chakra to go to other places. We can go down into mother earth and then she is connected to the cosmos. She is connected. Once we get connected to her, that is a gateway for us. We can step through from there. And that is a much more grounded, feasible, balanced, and what's the word I'm looking for? Like, it's more effective. It is more grounded. It, it is healthier for us as well. And it allows us to exchange codes, exchange data, exchange experiences um, with Gaia and this is a taught this just keeps coming up for me lately so get grounded with mother earth use her as a portal go down in order to step through and go up because <laughs> once we do that we have access to the infinite access to the infinite mother gaia is our access to the infinite we don't need to go up and out we need to go down down into the ground i love that i love that And it's so cool. Like these decks, yes, they're feminine decks, but not all the cards in them are feminine by far, especially this uh, Dreams of Gaia tarot. There's lots and lots of very masculine cards in it, but we got all incredibly feminine cards. Queen of Water. I love that she came out because she is literally about embodying love. And that is what this message is about. That is what this guided med meditation I'm going to include is going to help us practice embodying love, embodying warmth. That is literally, that's it. <laughs> and this 10 of air, this is all about, this is not like the 10 of swords. This, this tarot is really transcendent. It doesn't really use the regular tarot meaning. So this 10 of air is about completely embodying your own individuality and your own authenticity. And paired with this reverse mother, there is a very specific message here. Here's the mother, but she came out in reverse. So with this 10 of air, there's something going on here. This, this is showing us the block, something we need to work through. If you think about this mother in reverse, it is all of those things you don't like about your mom. Like think about when you were a teenager, all, all the things you found toxic about moms when they're over-involved, when they're helicoptering, when they are 
overly emotionally reactive, trying to emotionally involve themselves in everything, even if it's not their business. You know, they need to learn when to cut the cord, you know, cut the umbilical cord, they need to learn to let people go free. Um, and also those things when moms can be very, moms can feel a lot of guilt. <laughs> like <laughs> thinking about my mom here, they feel a lot of guilt about not being good enough. They feel a lot of guilt about not being more involved, even though they sometimes need to be less involved. And they can also be really emotionally manipulative and try to inflict guilt on their children. So something like that is going on with all of us and kind of with the divine feminine paradigm in general. Something about all of those things that things about the mother archetype that can be toxic or at least just holding us back. So combined with this 10 of air about embodying your freedom and your authenticity and your individuality. Yeah, take a look. We all need to take a look in our lives and figure out what things we need to let go of. These energies, they can be internal to us or they can be external. These are just themes and they're going to be different for all of us. And for some of us, they can be quite small. They can just be little things. This doesn't need to be like a big deal, but there's definitely something here about look in your life for where are, are you manipulating somebody emotionally? Are you trying to inflict guilt on somebody or is somebody doing that to you? Are you being emotionally manipulated? Is somebody inflicting guilt on you? Um, where in your life do you need to stand more on your own authenticity? Where do you need to cut the cords with other people and be more um, individualized? Where are you being emotionally um, reactive? Where are you being over-involved? Are you, are you trying to put your little fingers into a project that you should just step out of? Are there people in your family where you keep thinking, oh, you know, I need to help them do this. I need to help them plan this. I need to help organize them because if I don't help them, then they're just going to, it won't go as well, right? They need my assistance because I can help them do it better. Well, no, sometimes it's kind of like helping your kids do their homework, right? You should let them do it themselves. You should let them fail, you know, and maybe somebody, you know, Again, this can be going both ways. So just just look for these kind of themes in your life and address them. I feel like I feel like as soon as you notice them and address them, shine a little bit of light on them, you will be able to, you know, turn this mother upside right side up pretty quickly. I don't think this is a major point of the message, but I think it is just one thing that'll kind of come up um, as we kind of move through this, and it just needs to be addressed in order to clear out the space so that we can embody love as fully as possible. And we can see that very clearly because the final card here is the 10 of earth. Like the 10 of pentacles, this, this is just one of those awesome cards. It's abundance, it's everything coming together. It is your career, your family, all of your physical, practical, different strands of your life and of your being all coming together. This is, this is awesome. This is awesome. It is health, happiness, abundance, warmth, love, and prosperity uh, in your family and in your finances. Just, just everything coming together. It all, I feel, yeah, I, I really feel like there's a bunch of strands, a bunch of different things being braided together and it's all coming together with this 10 of earth. As long as, that's where we'll get if we move through these energies of finding our sacred vortexes, going through them, you know, going through the log, going through the tunnel, navigating those um, intimidating energies, intense energies, embodying love, embodying our individuality and our authenticity, working through any lingering issues we might have with mother archetypes, and then we come to this perfect embodiment of love and abundance in the infinite. So I think that is actually it for the cards. I haven't recorded the meditation yet, but now that I said it, now I have to do it, right? Um, I will just say that this practice of embodying love or embodying warmth, we... There are many different like levels to that frequency, right? Like think of all the types of emotions and intensities of loves that you can feel. Think of all the emotions you could categorize as love in terms of, you know. So 
we don't need to necessarily sit down to meditate and feel ecstatic love immediately. If we just do step by step what we can, it's going to be a practice that we can be doing over the long term. So if you sit down to meditate and you try to embody love and you just kind of feel a low level feeling of like contentment and warmth and compassion, that is great. Hold on to that. And if you only feel that for 10 seconds, that's fine. You start there. Um, you know, I'm in this practice too. I'm not up on my high horse here going, oh, you know, I have embodied love and I just shine my light out to everybody. No, that is actually what this is about. Um, anybody watching this video is, is probably like struggling, struggling to embody love. I think we're all feeling that we want to feel it more strongly. We want to feel it more viscerally. We want to be able to hold loving frequencies more often in our, as we walk through our daily lives. So this isn't about sitting down and just being <laughs> this beacon of light, right? Um, immediately, it is about practicing this. So I think that's why I'm being really strongly pushed to record this guided meditation just to help me practice and to help anybody else who wants to practice. And, you know, you can listen to the the recording and that can give you some ideas. You don't need to, when you do your your practice of embodying love. You don't need to do it the way that I do it in the recording, but you can, you can definitely if you want to. And you, but you can also find your own way of doing it. You can use my recording as inspiration and some ideas about how you can practice embodying love as we move forward. Because the planet could definitely use some higher, more stable frequencies of love. And as starseeds, we came here literally to hold frequencies that will be useful to other people. So right now that is embodying love. And thankfully we have gone through the heart healing and all, a lot of the emotional processing and clearing to finally get to this phase where we can do it. So this is really, I feel like this is a new phase for us. This is a kind of a graduation day and this is a new project. And that's why we're going to have to start small and practice embodying love as much as we can. <laughs> so I will see you in the meditation for anybody who wants to check that out. Love you guys. Bye. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this guided experience where we are all going to practice embodying warmth. We're going to practice it in this space. We are going to visualize adding our energy into a glowing ball of light, an archive of the energy we generate today so that in the future, whenever we want to, we can continue to add to that and to draw from it. We're going to create a collective reservoir of higher frequency energy for ourselves and for everyone. There's nothing you can do to mess this up. If you meditate, you already know what to do. If you've never meditated before, just relax and try to go with the visuals I'm going to be describing. You can also just listen to this while you're falling asleep. Your subconscious and your higher self will know what to do. We'll start by setting the space. Get in tune with your heart center. And we're going to imagine grounding down into the core of the earth, down to meet Gaia. <sighs> imagine either a red light or roots sinking down through your root chakra, through your feet, down through the floor, down through any obstacles between you and the earth down through the crust of the earth, down through whatever you imagine is between the crust of the earth and Gaia's core. In the core of the earth, Gaia's consciousness, you can see her embodied in a crystalline structure.
asking Gaia to support us today, invite her in to help us embody love, to help us find more stability in our embodiment of love, and to help us share it with others. Traveling back up, 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 through your feet, through your root chakra, into your heart space, and then up, 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 out the top of your head, meeting with our sun, soul, traveling to the Sagittarius A, the black hole in the center of our galaxy. Through there, up, up to the source, to the source of all that is. Bring it back down into our heart center. I'm going to take a moment to breathe into this connection down to the core of the earth and up to the source field and back to our heart center. Feel into that connection and call in your higher self, your guides, whatever beings you would like to work with. I'd like to call in the Divine Masculine, Father, Son, and the Divine Father to create a space for us to do this work, to hold us and witness us in order to embody Divine Feminine Love, we must let go of a lot of our the walls and shields we've built around ourselves to keep ourselves protected. We need to drop those shields, we need to drop them to make room for more warmth and more compassion. We know we can feel safe dropping those shields because we're calling in our Divine Father to watch over us and we are protected. And from this moment forward, we remember that now the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine embody the unified template, the unified paradigm, where both work in perfect harmony, in loving balance, and everything is co-created between the two. in this space created and held by the Divine Masculine. We call in all of our feminine archetypes, Mother Earth, the Divine Mother in all of her aspects, Mary Magdalene, the Lemurians, the Pleiadians, the Triple Goddess, the Moon Goddesses, our Lyran heritages. The waters of Earth's oceans. The Hadarian frequency, high frequency of ecstatic, excited love. 
we work with all our feminine aspects today. We call them all in. All into our heart space so that we can embody and hold warmth and compassion in love in whatever frequency we can hold today. Take a few moments to settle in and we ask all of our feminine archetypes to help us cultivate these frequencies of love in our heart space. Feeling yourself growing lighter, feeling the warm frequencies moving up into your high heart. Take those frequencies, whatever ones you can feel, and we're going to send them out, send them out into the center of all of us, all of us, whenever we are listening to this, in the center of all of us, there is a small golden ball of light. Imagine a beam of light moving from your high heart into that golden ball of light. You are sending your frequencies into the sphere, watching it grow, watching it shift, watching it sparkle and expand and grow brighter and brighter and larger and larger. Also receiving energy from the light, receiving the love from all of your brothers and sisters, all of your ancestors, all of your future selves. Remembering 
when you're walking through your daily human life and you feel detached or alone, that you can tune into this field of light and receive support from it. You can receive the frequencies of love coming from it. And you can add to it. And as time goes on, we can build and build and build. Already, it is growing and growing and growing. It's moved past all of us. The sphere of light is larger than our circle now. Going out and out and out and out. Feeling yourselves grow lighter and lighter as it encompasses the whole of the earth. We add more of our frequencies to it. All of our frequencies, because we have been doing this since our very first lifetime and until our very last lifetime, we add, we add to this field of love that we build with our brothers and sisters. It goes out and out and out, past soul, our sun, to all of the other suns you have ever lived around. Out to the darkest reaches of the Milky Way, it reaches Andromeda, it goes past our local group of galaxies. It transcends dimensions, going up the fifth dimension, the ninth dimension, the thirteenth dimension, into the source field. It goes all the way out into the void, into the ether. Into the ether, the field, the primordial field, the energy, the primordial energy of all things. Traveling back to ourselves, traveling back to soul system, back down into earth, back down into our bodies, coming down through our crown chakras, down into our hearts, down into our solar plexus, sacral chakra, our root chakra, traveling down back into the core of the earth. Asking Gaia, asking to have a symbiotic, reciprocal relationship with Gaia. We exchange all of our codes with her. We hold nothing back. She is our mother. She is our home. Holding none of our cosmic co codes back, giving them all to her, knowing they recycle right back to us. Grounding, grounding. She is our anchor in the endless universe, the endless spaces. Asking that this work we've done today, building this field of light, be accessible to any who wish to access it for their highest good, for as long as it serves their highest good knowing that we can step back into this field, into this moment, whenever we choose, remembering that we can ask on the support of Mother Earth, of the Divine Mother and the Divine Father. As we practice embodying loving frequencies and carrying them with us, as we walk through our human lives, remembering that one of the reasons we came here was to hold these frequencies on earth, 
to hold them. <sighs> to hold them so others can attune to them. This is one of our purposes, one of our projects, one of our missions. Getting comfortable in your body. Getting grounded, wiggling your toes, wiggling your fingers. Opening your eyes, seeing the world around you. Closing the field so that we are fully present in our bodies, fully grounded and ready to continue our day.